you're going to get cancer. It's when is the cancer going to happen to me? We are living in a world of fear. How do you sell a shampoo to a woman? You showed a woman a picture of a model or an actress with beautiful hair and a bottle of shampoo at the side. And then we look at our hair and we realize it's not as good as the hair in that picture. We sell by inducing fear. How do you sell protein shakes to the market out there? You make people believe that if you have more protein in the human body, you can have a better body. But that's not true. A lot of marketing is done by inducing fear in people. How do you sell a health insurance plan to someone? By making people believe that you will get sick one day, and that's why you need a health insurance plan to look after you when you get sick. Now, these are all good things. We need the shampoo. We need the health insurance. We need the protein in the right form. But it becomes a problem when our mindsets are controlled and ruled by everything we see, advertised in social media and everywhere. Which is why today we're going to learn how to use our own intellect, go back to the basics of simplicity, understand that the human body is designed to heal itself if we give it the right things. So many employees in large organizations spend a lifetime working to build their careers and build their wealth. They lose their health in the process of building their careers. And then the same money that they've used, that they've worked so hard for, they used to pay their medical bills. That is not living, and that can change from a CEO level to an employee level. That can change, not with more hospitals, we already have hospitals. We have great hospitals. We have great doctors. We have nutritionists. We have personal trainers. We have gyms. But why are the statistics of health getting worse and worse? Why are there more people with diabetes? Why are there more people dying of cancer? Why do we lead when it comes to cardiovascular problems when we have such a strong system of health care? Because there's a gap, and that gap now has to be filled with one drug, one drug which is practically inexpensive and practically free. That drug is called lifestyle. And each and every one of you in this room tonight, you have that ability to make one small lifestyle change at a time. And when you add up these little lifestyle changes that you make day on day, it leads to the larger picture of prevention, and healing. Let's move straight into the paradigm of health that I want to talk about today. There are four verticals if you're looking at preventing disease, if you're looking at healing disease, if you're looking at just feeling good. Ask yourself four or five times in a day at any given point, am I feeling good right now? At least three out of five times, you should get an answer, yes. If it's no, 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 you're not living. You will get sick. A happy mind is a happy body. I don't expect everyone to be happy all the time. Can you be happy all the time? Human life is not designed that way. Each and every one of us are born with the seven deadly sins. Each and every one of us, be it jealousy, be it sloth, be it anger, envy, lust, whatever it is, we're born with it. Look at a little baby. They express jealousy when the mother carries another baby. They express anger when they're throwing tantrums. And they've not been exposed to life yet. These are natural traits which we all grow up with. It is okay to accept that we have these seven deadly sins as long as we tame it and as long as we are in control of it. The moment we allow it to control us, that's when all the problems arise. So the first thing is self-acceptance, that we will have happy times we will also have sad times. How do we arrive at a balance of maintaining our health between these two times? We will have stressful times and we will have peaceful times in our business and in our personal life as well. But how do we find that balance? Today we can choose to use alcohol, we can use cigarettes and cigars, we can use socializing, 
We can use movies and television, video games, and social media to numb the effect of sadness, to numb the feelings that we do not want to feel. That's good for a while, but when it becomes a habit, we never change the root cause of what is making us unhappy and what is making us sick. And that's when the problem slowly grows and festers, and then it consumes us, consumes us at one particular point. The four verticals that we're going to talk about today before we open it up for questions and answers. Balanced nutrition. Note that I stress on the word balanced. I'm not talking low carb. I'm not talking high protein. I'm not talking ketogenic. I'm not talking any of these diets. I'm talking about giving your body what it needs for you. Not what some actress or model or athlete or some ad is telling you to eat. Because each and every one of you in this room have different bodies, a different genetic makeup, a different mindset, a different home environment, and a different culture. Let's understand food and why it is information to your genetic makeup. The moment you stop breastfeeding, the food that your parents fed you on for the first 10 to 15 years in your life is the food that communicated with your genes to grow you. After you breastfed, the completion of growth of your liver, your brain, your musculoskeletal system, your heart, all of your vital organs were completed with the food that your parents fed you on. Your genes recognize that food. It will never forget that food. Now, when we make a sudden change away from what we were fed into something new, the genes change their communication. It doesn't get what it needs, what it needed to grow you. And I ask everyone who has a health problem or a weight problem, introspect and ask yourself, at what stage in my life did those problems start? And mostly everyone will get a clue that it started when you started making changes in your diet and in your lifestyle. Now, if your diet was different and you grew up eating McDonald's and hamburgers, this doesn't apply to you. I'm talking about your normal, wholesome food. So when we suddenly ape the West, or we start eating quinoa, because marketing companies have decided that quinoa is a superfood, it is a great food, no doubt about it. But you grew up on rice, or wheat, or barley, or rye, or whatever it is, and you suddenly change that. What do we get? We start getting intolerances. We start damaging our gut. Our gut is never used to these new foods. It's used to what you grew up on. And then we, have, we start having autoimmune disorders. And what are some of these disorders that we see all across the Indian societies, worldwide? Thyroid, PCOD, ovarian issues, diabetes, Crohn's, Hashimoto's. Autoimmune diseases caused by a weak gut because something is destroying our gut. Gluten intolerance has become a fad word. There's a small population of people who cannot have gluten. They're called celiacs. But all of a sudden, we have a whole other population suddenly believing that, oh, wheat is bad for me. It bloats me. It bloats you because your digestive system is weak. You don't blame the food. You blame your gut. So the whole idea is when we look at nutrition, how close are you to your staple diet? And ask yourself a question. If the diet that you grew up on didn't make you sick, that is exactly the diet that you should be eating today, as far as possible, because you're not living in your native country anymore. When South Indians in India move from idlis and masala dosas to quinoa and the Mediterranean diet, they fall sick. They have gut issues, they have IBS issues, and then they have thyroid, diabetes, and everything else. People from South India also fall sick when they increase their portion size of rice and dosas and idlis as well. The point we're trying to make when it comes to balanced nutrition is, number one, try and maintain a diet that is 60 to 70% raw and the balance cooked. Now, this may seem very extreme, but if you look at a traditional Indian balanced diet, it is already designed to be 60 to 70% raw and the rest cooked. 
when, I, when I'm talking about raw, I'm talking about your fruits. I'm talking about your vegetables in the form of raw vegetables, juices, or salads. I'm talking about your nuts and seeds. Everything that we grew up eating makes your diet 60 to 70% raw. And the balanced is cooked food. When we eat cooked food, we just get energy. Don't expect too much of nutrition from food that is cooked because the heat destroys most of the vitamins and minerals in it, which is why we start off with a salad and then we have cooked food. We start off with fruits in the morning. We start off with vegetable juices. We have nuts and seeds in the evening as a snack or in the morning. So we have raw food entering your body all the time. Why raw food? One of the reasons why we have digestive issues, acidity, bloating, flatulence, stomach cramps, painful periods, is because our food has lost the ability to digest the right way in the human body. What digests food in the human body? Stomach acid. Alone? No. Digestive enzymes. Which food group contains digestive enzymes? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. If you have a diet that does not have raw food, your body doesn't have the ability to digest, and you tend to get more and more acidic. When the more and more acidic you get, the more and more difficult it is for you to lose weight. The more acidic you get, your chances of diabetes is higher, and your chances of healing from diabetes is lower. Because everyone looks at diabetes as high sugar levels. No one's looking at the health of their pancreas. Your pancreas is what produces insulin. Diabetes is a disease that involves less insulin, or insulin not being used the right way by the human body. But no one's looking to see, why isn't my pancreas producing the right amount of insulin? When you're acidic, the cells in your pancreas get acidic, and that prevents it from producing insulin. So when you aim to make your body alkaline, or you give your body raw enzymes from raw foods, you help your body digest food effectively without putting stress on your pancreas. So today, when I'm making a statement over here right now that most cases of diabetes are 100% reversible, 100% reversible if you use lifestyle and you stop looking at disease from a symptomatic approach, but rather from, why do I have diabetes? Now, there are type 1 cases and certain cases of diabetes which are genetic in nature. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who have diabetes, which is induced by poor lifestyle over the years. When you start looking at the root cause, and you start treating the root cause, that's when you have the power and the ability to reverse disease. That's diabetes. What about cardiovascular? Most bypass surgeries are unnecessary. We still live with the mindset that Person A died of a cardiac arrest. Oh, he had high cholesterol. There are very few autopsies across the world which shows you that a cardiac arrest patient who died, died because of cholesterol. They died because of inflammation. And no one's talking about inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of most diseases. You have inflamed pancreas, and that's why you have diabetes. You have inflamed arteries, and that's why you get a stroke or a cardiac arrest. You have inflamed cells, and that's why you get cancer. But the focus is completely on the symptom. And we forget to look at the root cause, which is inflammation. So if we have someone who has a cardiovascular problem, we first change the way they eat so that we reduce inflammation. You don't need to be on a calorie-restricted diet and eat 600 calories and 1,000 calories. You need to eat foods that reduce inflammation. And then you need to have the right amount of activity so that your blood circulates and helps clean the arteries naturally. Then you have to have the right amount of sleep because the heart and every organ in the human body rejuvenates and repairs while you sleep. And then the fourth vertical is stress. So when you come to balanced nutrition, the number one change that everyone can make is number one, look at your water intake. My specialty is cancer. If I have to put a number to it, at least 92 to 93 percent of the patients I see every day should never have reached that stage. 
what I mean by that is, at some point in their life, they were constipated. They were drinking two to three glasses of water a day. They were sleeping for three to four hours. Exercise was once in a month, or once in a week, or once in two weeks. They brought the disease onto them because of low immunity and inflammation. And yes, there are cancers which are genetic and out of our control, caused by environmental toxins and everything else. But today, if we're over here and we want to make this a meaningful evening, we need to understand, introspect, don't look at the side and see what lifestyle change my partner's going to make. What lifestyle change am I going to make today? And it's got to be very simple and very easy. You don't have to go onto a diet plan. You've got to look at your diet and say, what are my gaps? And let me fill them one by one. Let me start by getting my breakfast right, even if it takes me a week. And then let me focus on my lunch. Take another week. And then my dinner. I take another week. But in three weeks, you would have changed the way your body feels and your immunity levels are at. The second vertical, adequate exercise. Note that I use the word adequate because too many people are overtraining and too many people are punishing their body with exercise, thinking that, okay, I'm going to eat an ice cream today and I'll just burn it off in the gym tomorrow. 